Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the specific heat capacity of an unknown metal using experimental data. In the situation we are going to investigate, we have 10.61 grams of a metal, and it's originally at 100 degrees centigrade. And this particular metal is dropped into 250 milliliters of water. And the original temperature of the water is 23.1 degrees centigrade. Now the final temp is 23.4 degrees centigrade. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to calculate the heat capacity of the specific heat capacity of the metal. If you like, you can pause the video, attempt the solution of the problem, and then come back and check your solution against mine. Welcome back. First, we are going to look at the heat flow with relation to the water. So first, we're going to look at the H2O. And we notice that the change in temperature for the water is its final temperature minus initial temperature. So we have 23. 4 degrees centigrade minus 23.1 degrees centigrade. So we have an increase, a positive increase of 0 0.3 degrees centigrade for the water. The second thing we want to look at is to find the mass of the water. Well, we know its volume is 250 milliliters. We also recall that the density of water is almost exactly 1 gram per milliliter, which gives us a mass of 250 grams. Note that it's most common in this type of problem to give the water in terms of its volume rather than in terms of a mass, and it'll be a standard uh, solution procedure to convert from the uh, volume of the water to a mass using the density. Last but not least, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree centigrade. Therefore, we can calculate the heat flow relative to the water. And we'll call that QH2O. The formula that we use is M times S times delta T. So we plug into that particular equation. We have our 250 grams of water. We have our specific heat capacity, S, which is 4.184 joules per gram degree centigrade. And our change in temperature is 0 0.3 degrees centigrade. And if we put all this in there, we get that the heat flow relative to the water is going to be 313.8 joules. Next, we want to look at the heat flows relative to the metal. So the change in temperature of the metal is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we have 23.4 degrees centigrade minus 100 degrees centigrade. And we get a value of minus 76 point six degrees centigrade. So it's negative because the uh, metal is cooling down. The hot metal gets thrown into the water, it cools down, so it's going to have a negative delta T. The mass we're given, so we know the mass is 10.61 grams, and then S is unknown, which we need to calculate. So for the time being, the 
Q. For the metal. Is M, S, delta T. But where M, S, and delta T all refer to what's happening with the metal. We know the mass is 10.61 grams. The heat capacity is unknown, so we just leave it as S. And we know that the change in temperature is minus 76.6 degrees centigrade. So if we combine all those particular terms, we get minus S times 812.726 grams degree centigrade. So that is Q with respect to the metal. The final equation that we need to make use of to solve uh, this problem makes use of the law of conservation of energy. So we know that in an isolated system that Q of H2O plus Q of the metal has to be equal to zero. So we already have calculated Q H2O as 313.8 joules. We also know that Q of the metal is minus S times 812.726 grams degree centigrade. And this is equal to zero. Now we simply add S times 812 to each side to get 313.8 joules equals S times 812.726 grams degree centigrade. Now it's simply a matter of dividing each side by 812 centigrade and once we solve we find that S the specific heat capacity of our unknown metal is equal to 0 0.386 and we have to have the proper units which are joules per gram degree centigrade Note that if you were to ever find the specific heat capacity to be negative, that is guaranteed to be an incorrect answer. So the specific heat capacity must be a positive value. And the positive value in this case is 0 0.386 joules per degree centigrade, which just happens to be the specific heat capacity of copper. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.